Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you were watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about Skatari and the Dark Mechanicum uh, and the story of Zoar Kod. Uh, if you have not checked out part one, which is titled um, 40 Facts and Lore on the Forge World Zoar Kod, click on that first. Link is going to be down in the description. Um, we're going to go into the second conjunction. And of course, if you're completely new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day. But with that said, let's get into it. Let's get into 40 facts on Zoar Kod's Second Conjunction. Reaching the goals of the Second Conjunction was no easy task. While the lunar colonies had yielded welcoming mineral wealth, none of the moons harbored any of the specialist materials necessary to build additional long-range spacecraft. As Zoar Kod had already consumed all the void-worthy materials from their original Mechanicum Arc for the construction of their lunar transport fleet and a small conveyor fleet, the Magi were faced with a difficult decision. In the end, military considerations tipped the balance and it was decided that several transport barges would be wrecked and that their materials used for the creation of a single explorer vessel which would transport up to 20,000 colonists to their new home. For this purpose, the hydro torch engines of the lunar barges would be linked into great reactor blocks to allow the vessel to break free of the grip of Zoarkod's gravity. The explorer's atmospheric pressure system and life support were equally boosted to allow the ship and its crew to survive the estimated six solar months of travel unscathed. Most of the ship was crafted from salvaged materials, all of which had suffered from some level of corrosion due to the oxygen and humidity rich surface on which the Ark had landed, or had been freshly forged from far more common ores with lesser strength. The Nidos expedition was led by the forged Domini of the Zoarchod's primary forge fane, who would personally command and maintain the ship while en route to Nidos. The launch of the Nidos explorer vessel whose name was unrecorded or was perhaps purged from the official records, was declared a major success. Across the Zoarkod's lunar colonies, those servial workers chosen to be part of the expedition were celebrated as blessed in the sight of the machine god. Many festivities were organized as the vessel departed on its voyage. For the first three solar months of its trip, everything went according to plan, but about halfway to their intended goal, the rear of the vessel was struck by a meteorite no more than two centimeters in diameter. Weakened by the corrosive effects of Zoar Kod's atmosphere, the hull proved incapable of withstanding such a minor strike, and the impact initiated a chain reaction of ruptures that led to an explosive decompression of the vessel's interior, exposing the colonists to the fatal vacuum of the void. In a matter of a few solar minutes, Zoarkod's great venture had turned to a disaster. The loss of Nittles' explorer vessel was the first great crisis encountered by the forge fanes of Zoarkod, and many were those who secretly blamed the supreme Domini for it. Fearing the adverse effects that the news of this tragic accident might have on the servial worker caste, which severely outnumbered the Magi, the loss of the expeditionary vessel was deliberately kept secret for fear the heavily indoctrinated and religious workers might see the vessel's loss as an ill omen or even worse, the judgment of the machine god upon their masters. Still in need of new resources for its planned expansion, Zawar Kod turned its attention to mining the asteroid field, far less rich than Nitos had been, but closer and more readily accessible. However, the cruel hand of fate was not quite done with Zoar Kod, or as the ancient Terran proverb says, disasters never come alone. Shortly after the Nitto's disaster, the Zo system was increasingly plagued by immaterial turbulence and warp storms, the like of which had stranded the Mechanicum Ark on Zoar Kod in the first place. Strange events grew widespread among the lunar colonies. From otherwise harmless strange glowing lights or auras that haunted the tunnels and caverns of the deep forge fanes and the lunar mines, to infrequent occurrences of warp entity possession or sudden insanity. Most affected were those of the worker caste who unknowingly manifested the Psyker gift, becoming suddenly aware of the emergence of Psykers in their midst. The Magi of Zoarkad, and especially those of the Imnari forge fane, began to see them as an interesting new research subject but would not yet act upon it. 
This would soon change, for with the warp storms came the first predations of Xeno Corsairs, believed to belong to the Eldar race. The Corsairs' attention was drawn to the lunar colonies and the void stations established in the asteroid belt, but curiously never touched Zoarkot itself. However, the Magi knew that they could not survive without their workers and the resources they generated, and fiercely sought to protect these from the Corsairs' baleful attention. The Supreme Domini declared that all efforts should now be concentrated on the defense of the Servio colonies and off-world outposts. This edict is known to have bred particular discontent amongst the Forge Fanes, as the central authority of the Supreme Domini began to assert itself and require ever greater portions of the Forge Fane's wealth and resources to be directed to military needs. Soon discontent voices began to murmur that the Xeno's deprivation was a visual sign that the Omnissiah had turned his gaze from the Supreme Domini for his failures. It was during these years of continued militarization of the Forge World's production that the Iminari Forge Fane grew to prominence. All over Zoar Kod, some few Forge Fanes had begun to apply reclamation protocols to the gears and bodies of their enemies, all with the tactical approval of the Supreme Domini, who believed that at the end, the survival of the Forge World would justify the means. As such, Xeno weaponry and materials were soon given new purpose by strengthening Zoarkod's ever-growing arsenal, a practice that would justly be considered as a perversion of the sacred design of the Omnissiah on every other Mechanicum Forge world. This was, however, not enough for the Iminari, who chose to tread down an even darker path. Petition by Magos Tacticus Proctor of the Iminari Forge Fane, the Supreme Domini allowed the Forge Fane to requisition and experiment on the emergent Psyker population of the lunar colonies. The Magos Proctor's goal was to replicate the precognitive skills some of the Psychers had manifested, thus greatly increasing the potency of Zoarkod's defenses. While replication naturally proved difficult to achieve, some measure of success was met by augmenting the cerebral cortexes of battle automatons with a synthetic, mapped neural network and harvested cortical material which increased the automaton's responsiveness and seemed to grant near precognitive levels of response time to threat stimuli. The fact that such techno-arcana had long been prescribed by the Mechanicum since the fall of the Old Knight seemed not to have hindered the Iminari Forge in pursuing its researches and standing as a testimony to the extreme deviation in doctrine that had occurred on the isolated Forge world. Properly impressed with the abilities of these new cybernetic cortexes, the Supreme Domini declared that each colony would be provided with these Iminari hybrid battle automatons, as well as the base combat models assembled in the Chiari Forge Fanes, while other Forge Fanes contributed in other ways to the defense of Arcada 1, 2, and 3, be it through the production of static gun emplacements, fortifications, or simple ammunition. An immediate decrease in damage inflicted and servial casualties caused was recorded in the raids of the Xenos Corsairs, making the Zoar Cod's defensive project as a great success for all of the Forge Fanes involved. Yet other Forge Fanes found that disproportionate attention was laid on the efforts of the Chiari and the Iminari Forges, with some even openly talking of favoritism from the Supreme Domini. This talk only masked the growing tension between these favored Forge Fanes and other Forges of Zoarkad. Even as Zoarkad was forced to constantly face Xenos raids and other harrowing, otherworldly incursions, the Forge world began to tear itself apart in the interscene conflict that was later known as the Chiari Wars. And those were 40 facts on the Zoar Cod second conjunction. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's going to be a part three where we talk about this major conflict that will occur. Uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying the lore and seeing how a forge world turns to chaos. Um, slowly but surely, it's usually fear that takes you um, to the dark side. Not like a Jedi, but like chaos, dark side. So I guess it takes you to the chaotic side. Whatever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want uh, some extra videos, jump on over to Patreon. Simple dollar a month helps us create more videos. And uh, if you have any requests, just comment down below. With that said, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out.